Basically, you can think about Bitcoin as a, it's an open source piece of technology. Uh, and specifically, uh, at the foundation of it is a, a, a public ledger or a public general ledger that is shared and replicated over a peer-to-peer -peer network. It really has value entirely on the basis of those that either believe it will continue to grow in value as a system of exchange uh, or from transactions that are flowing through it that are uh, pegged to or tied to an exchange value in other currencies. At the end of the day, it's a public ledger that's open source, cryptographically verifiable, that allows people to prove ownership of units on that ledger very easily. There is very little debate that Bitcoin, the protocol, Bitcoin, the technology, has the potential to dr dramatically transform and disrupt the banking system, payments, remittance. At gold has underperformed um, quite significantly over the past 12 months. Around the world, people are excited about the idea of this, this currency that's not controlled by a government, not created by a government, um, that has all the attributes of gold, but the best part is it actually has utility. You can actually use it. By relying on this distributed decentralized network and network infrastructure, which processes and confirms transactions, uh, we're able to radically lower costs of processing electronic payments. In five to 10 years, we will all sit around and say, we're able to send and receive money and make payments instantly anywhere on the planet at no cost, and we'll take it for granted. If and when Wall Street moves into Bitcoin, you're gonna see hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billion dollars, move into this new asset class. It's gonna be because of companies like Jeremy's, like Circle, that make it really easy to buy and hold and use Bitcoin, that we're gonna see Bitcoin really spread throughout the entire world. The key is that businesses need to be established that follow the same rules that other financial institutions follow, which is keep bad actors and criminals off the platform which is really critical, and protect consumers. Anybody who has access to a mobile phone or, or a connected device anywhere in the world, I mean, whether it's Africa or otherwise, can acquire, can be sent Bitcoin. And so from, from that perspective, I mean, it really is, I think, the most accessible currency that has ever been released into the wild. At this point, most central banks and governments are trying to just be educated and likewise make sure that institutionally funded businesses have appropriate safeguards around them. The regulators, policymakers, and legislators are taking a very, very accommodative approach to Bitcoin. There's going to be leaky valves, uh, just as there are leaky valves in the global financial system today. When I'm in DC and I'm speaking with law enforcement, behind closed doors, many of them are now saying to me, we would rather see criminals use Bitcoin than cash. And that's a very powerful statement because ultimately Bitcoin, at least they have the chance of tracing Bitcoin throughout the entire network. I think the key kind of thing to focus on though is really pay attention to the adoption of this technology for payments, the adoption of this technology by mainstream retailers, online services, e-commerce providers. That's gonna be the biggest forward indicator of whether this is something that is gonna take hold as a platform that is really broadly used.